is oh, yeah. I, I really that that is writing the book on adaptability. You get three, three different characters, characters with Absolutely. three totally different properties. Oh yeah, one of them has an extra double jump. They have very different play styles amongst themselves. Uh, Squirtle's more of a rushdown combo heavy character, but like Foxy can kind of get squirrely and try to play uh, out maneuvering the opponent to get that mm -hmm. hit. Uh, he just doesn't have like as much burst range and definitely doesn't have the hitboxes that Fox does. But yeah. he has crazy damage output. And, I'm, you know, Ivysaur is the zoner, Charizard, uh, more of a boxer, but he tries to play at this range. Kind of a heavy hitter. Yeah. I think the big thing that we're going to be seeing, especially in this game one, because we're on Battlefield, is that uh, it, it would be at higher percents. But unfortunately, you know, the Squirtle's only going to be out in the higher percents. But in theory, Fox could very well uh, just kind of camp on these platforms and let Denti make a mistake, come to him with the Squirtle out. Of course, Ivysaur and Charizard are so good at covering those platforms that, you know, circle camping all over them is not exactly safe. Oh no, I don't expect Jason to take the platforms too much. That was a beautiful attempt at covering a tech chase. Had he caught tech away, um, that could have been a combo to up air. And all under that platform would have been huge. Okay, good maneuvering there around the Razor Leaf. Jason knowing that Denti's trying to set him up in a certain oh. position. Wow, it goes right to the ledge. Ivysaur definitely gets away from the uh, pressure of Fox a little bit better than others. When it's not a true combo to that up air, he can use that down air to escape the sharking situation. Mm -hmm. It's got a good bit of a disjoint. It stalls his descent for a, a good bit. Yeah, you know, against characters that are, you know, a little oh, bit better Jason. at... Oh, Oh, no, yeah, goes, misses that angle. That's unfortunate. He didn't, That's, didn't want to go straight for Denti because it looked like he was trying to cover that option, mm -hmm. but uh, didn't get the slight angle. It looks like it was very... Wow, ready. That was beautiful. Jason, I mean, you just react to it, yeah, especially if he's that far out. Flare Blitz comes out. That gives you an audio cue. That means Perfect. he can react even faster. Perfect distance. Got the turnaround up smash as well. Yeah, that, that looked beautiful. clean. But, uh, but I want to go back to what you were saying about the Ivysaur, because we're going to see a lot more of it in this set. Yeah, of course. Particularly on Battlefield, you were saying about how he can particularly land better against Fox, maybe than against other oh. characters, because... Does he just have a jump? Does he? No, but he's able to make it back. Oh, As long as Denti drops this. Okay, barely. Barely. Yeah. He didn't even take that much percent for it, because Squirtle doesn't do a lot of damage. Yeah, no. I but mean, it's just... It's just you're in a very terrifying situation. Yeah, any one of those hits could have been the last, but now Denti is bringing that percent to a point where uh, he's not going to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. There but we chilling go. Chilling on this right again with that downer. So you were so you were saying, and this is the third time trying to say it because these players just keep making action happen, but Denti can land with that downer better than against other characters because Fox is so much just I hit above me and below me, and he doesn't have a lot of big side hit boxes. If he does with the backer, you can react to it. So of oh. course, oh my gosh, getting the reset with a downer to the forward smash, yes. Jace. Jason, Jason fell right into it. Stock, yeah. yeah. Beautiful tech chase situation. Both these players capitalizing on a very important mechanic. And this up air from Ivysaur, of course, especially on Battlefield as well, is going to be able to cover the whole platform. He's going to be able to do to Fox what Fox does to other characters. Mm -hmm. I was about to say, man, I mean, you see Fox do this all the time. We talk about how Battlefield is so good for Fox for multiple reasons, including that combo game. But Ivysaur is right up there with the characters that can make you hurt on it. He's going to get the ledge trap. Oh, he didn't want to be off stage. That's it. That's unfortunate. Ooh. He wanted to cross up with the downer so he could set up a situation where maybe, maybe Denti panics, presses a button, and uh, Jason gets some advantage out of it, but drifting off stage put himself in a almost unrecoverable situation. I think, and I think that's... Because that was his double jump, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. That he jumped off with, so there's not much that he can adjust uh, as long as Denti's still on his timing. That's it. And, I mean, and that's something you were saying. I mean, like, make him go for like uh, a panic and see if you can capitalize on that. Well, I think if Denti is down, that's a very good thing to do because Denti is the kind of person that wants to, that tends to want to get right back into the game. But if Denti's up, he knows what his job is. He's been around the block before and he knows the job that he has to do, which is to simply wait for you to do something. Yeah, we'll see uh, if Denti's going to be able to get that same game plan set up here. He's got the down throw into the down air. That combo's started nicely already. Again, that low profile of Squirtle's going to make it hard for Fox to land the sweet spots of those aerials that he loves to get those combos on. 79%. Ooh. Denti, if he doesn't pick up this edge guard, will be looking to switch to that Ivysaur soon. Uh, it looks like he really likes ledge trapping with uh, Squirtle in this matchup, actually. He's yeah. doing a good job of it. 
but a little bit of a commitment. He might use that uh, Ivy Sword just as a quick switch to get a little bit extra weight and get away from this disadvantage. Boy, you called that the quick switch. <laughs> that was able to call him out on the jump. Jason was like, okay, I'm right in his face and I don't want that. And Denti was ready. Fox also, as a character archetype, jumps a lot to get a lot of his stuff set up. Tries to land with Nair Dare. Not as much Dare in this game, but of course, still landing with a Nair. Uh, and back air, of course, are options that he threatens Ooh. with. Quick, man. Denti's got him off stage. That Nair edge guard, we see it all the time from Denti, and I like that he uses the return there just to set himself up in a more reasonable edge or recovery scenario. He's at 91%, so Jason's not killing him anytime soon. Ooh, wow, he trades with the up smash. First hit. That's something that I don't think a lot of people are willing to challenge, but Jason at the very least said, hey, if I throw out a hitbox, maybe I'll trade with it and I'll take the stop. We didn't get to see a lot of the Charizard in the last game because it just immediately footballed to the stage and died. But right now, Denti's setting up these ledge traps. Great. Didn't go high enough. That was a really good high illusion. That's something we didn't see from Jason up against hockey at all. And the fact that Denti committed there to the ledge gave Jason the opportunity to do that high illusion mix-up. Just can't be going for it often. He sees it right there. He's not committed to anything at the moment, so he just goes low. Okay. Nice drop shield, recognizing that he has enough lag to punish the forward smash, and that'll kill the Charizard. Now, Jason has an opportunity to bring things back a little bit. He's just got to be patient, not jump as much. Maybe he's there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Use the reflector, set up with dash attacks. Be careful how you're jumping in on this Ivysaur. You know, that in that first game, Jason did reflect the Razor Leaf, wasn't ready to follow up on it. And he saw, oh, he actually gets put into a decent amount of hit stuns. So this time, he turned around very quickly, by the way, I might add, for a game two, and says, all right, let's see what I can get off of this. Just missed the grab. <gasps> Denti trying to do some wild stuff. That looked like he was charging an up smash out of shield. Yeah. Oh, that's going to hit. Jason uh, finally was able to avoid it. Yeah, switch to the edge guard Pokemon. Oh my gosh! Dude, that was looking like some DBZ stuff, and with that up smash, catching him coming right on the stage. Wow, the second hit actually catching neutral get up still. Uh, that's that's definitely a quality of life buff from uh, Smash 4. I don't think he would have hit. Dude, I feel like a lot of people need to do get up attack when people, especially Denti, but when a lot of people are just sitting there at the ledge. Oh, oh my gosh! And I was telling you, I feel like he really likes this Down air. combination of ledge trapping because when he goes for the Squirtle down smash, or, uh, or that, that particular smash tag, I think that's the down smash from Squirtle. I could be wrong. Yes. Apologies what? if I am wrong. But when he goes for that smash deck to set up the ledge trap, gets that two frame, sends him way out. It sends him at a perfect distance where he is forced to use that slow, reactable recovery, mm -hmm. and Denti has time to swap over to the Ivysaur to get a guaranteed down there.